Cool. Welcome back, fellow appreciators of funky little dudes. I am so glad you're here with me in this space where we turn our half-baked daydreams into lovingly constructed cosplay projects. There are so many amazing character and costume designs in the Legend of Zelda games, but when I played Breath of the Wild, I took one look at the Korix, at these little forest gremlins, and I said, yeah, that's what peak performance looks like. I'm gonna become one of those critters. Sure, if I wanted, I could make a brown onesie and just recreate what these fellas look like in-game, and that would be totally fun and totally valid but that's not what I'm about. I like inventing my own impossible standards and doing freaking backflips to try and meet them. So I'm designing an outfit that brings together the visual cues of Zelda NPCs with the crunchiness and aesthetic of And we are gonna build it from the ground up. If we haven't met before, hi, I am Lizard Lee. This is not the first time I've gone way too hard on a build like this, and it won't be the last. My first step for this was sketching a design in Procreate. I should say I traced this over an image from Senshi Stock, who is a stock artist who I have been using since back in the Deviant Art days. I support them on Patreon right now, and I just think they're a really wonderful creator. So as I'm pulling together the kind of like, what things do I want to look like a Zelda NPC versus what things do I want to look like a little like aesthetic Pinterest. Oh no, gosh, I need to gesture less. <laughs> I really wanted to make like an overalls suspenders kind of thing. However, I did not want to actually make overalls cause that just felt like a time sink. So I'm aiming for like a kind of overall shirt. The shorts, okay, so like, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> I don't know why almost every cosplay I design, I'm like shorts. What's gonna make this cosplay look good? It's shorts. Even though they were something I could have sourced ultimately when I was trying to look on like Poshmark and ThreadUp, I just found myself getting so picky with the fit and with the color that I realized it would just be faster and more convenient for me to make them myself. Obviously we're gonna have some kind of like mini capelet cloak hood type thing to be the iconic little like tree stump horns, which I'm very excited about. This cosplay is hopefully going to be worn in its like 1.0 initial debut version at Hallmat, which is less than a week away, my friends. We're feeling a little crunchy. It's gonna be kind of a frantic energy in the studio today. <laughs> we are just about ready to get started, but before I am going to grab all of the fabric that I sourced for this. <laughs> My sketching and sourcing are always in a kind of like chicken and egg dance because honestly, I will sketch something and then go sourcing and maybe I find something that's like a perfect fabric that I had not planned for. Shopping for fabric in the garment district is always like a side quest, honestly. We are starting with this guy because I am like freaking obsessed. This fabric I totally overbought on. Like I bought way more yards than I need because I found it and I was just like, oh my God, it's like wood texture. It's like a mid to heavyweight cotton. And this is really gonna be our bread and butter for this build. Honestly, I love a cheap like Shandong blend. I think it has just the right amount of texture and it's really easy to work with. I grabbed this one in like, honestly, a full on taupe. But I think this balances out the different shades of camel that we have to keep it from being too like, warm and yellow toned. Here we have our stretch faux suede, so soft. This is the main fabric that I used for making the purse that I already finished. This is a lovely wool blend. This is gonna be our shorts. It's definitely a thing that I have been trying to get better at in my design work is making my designs feel more intentionally balanced with the use of like mid light dark tones. I, stretch fabric just doesn't wanna stay folded y'all. Don't judge me for it being in a ball. Because I knew I was gonna be bringing in a lot of ribbed textures, I like that this has a very subtle, very teeny tiny rib. I'm starting with the shorts because I know that layer wise, I'm not really gonna be able to get a good sense for the fit of the overall top if I don't have the shorts at least mostly done. These are the shorts that I'm basing them off of. If you are my friend, you are looking at these and you're like, oh yeah, the shorts that Lizard wears three times a week in the summer months. They're vintage, I've had them for years. They have darts in the back and they have a pleat in the front. So we're just gonna trace them on some fabric and start throwing it together and it's gonna work out and it's gonna be fine. Okay, let's go. You know, I didn't realize when I was making these that I was working on a cosplay of beloved superstar Jack Black in the hit movie School of Rock. But that's clearly the energy that I'm putting out into the universe right now. So the edges are not finished now. I'm gonna cuff them and see if it looks a little bit less 
like I'm about to take some elementary schoolers on a journey to appreciate rock and roll. Way more the vibe, way more the energy we're going for. Now we know in our hearts that um, you're not hardcore unless you live hardcore and the legend of the rent was way hardcore. <laughs> but they look like how we were planning on them to look. The last thing that I do need to do is I am going to put a strip of accent fabric on the bottom here so that when I roll it up, the cuff will be of a slightly different color. I'm gonna start making my mock-up of this funny little overall shirt and we will see how it goes. I just accidentally recorded a whole bit uh, without the mic on because I was starting to get dressed in this sweater to talk about it. And then I realized that I had not put my binder on, so it was a very kind of like, oh no, I've got to put these away. And as a non-binary person, you know, sometimes I like cosplaying boys, sometimes I like cosplaying girls. I am definitely making this cork to not really have boy or girl energy, but to just have chaos. So the titties are away and now I can talk about this sweater. I got this on Poshmark. I have to buy new things for materials anyway, so if I can recycle something, I try to do that. Do we got tree energy? We got tree vibes? I definitely made drafting this just way too complicated and way too difficult on myself. Okay, so I don't hate this. Actually, I thought I was gonna hate this a lot more before I got it on. I think it is reading a skosh apron -y, um, and I am thinking, I am realizing I think I need to make this part go a little bit wider. One of the hardest things for me in cosplay is to not waste hours <laughs> standing in front of my mirror and just going like, huh, hmm, is this, should I move this, huh, hmm. Just real quick, how did this, how did that happen? Do you see that? Nonsense. It is kind of funny to me that this whole time I was like, ooh, I'm gonna make it overalls, but like a shirt. It's gonna be really like, whoa. And then as soon as I started making it, I was like, oh, it's a fucking apron. Like we have a word for that, <laughs> which let's be clear, I am fine with. Like I think a cute little decorative apron can still be very cottage core and still be very like, I'm a little goblin that lives out in the woods. So as you can see, I use my favorite method of just Frankensteining on another piece of muslin when I realized that I needed to fill in a space. There must be a technical name because if there's anything that I've learned in cosplaying, if you think you're like inventing a new way to like save time, make something happen, People that sew have probably already been doing it for centuries and they have a name for it. Honestly, I might keep the seam here because I like it feeling continuous with the seam on the waistband. In my dreams, I'm gonna have a stripe of bias tape made out of the Shantung going here. I also wanna do some little squares on this waistband because I noticed a lot of these Zelda NPCs had this kind of strange repeating rectangle pattern on some of their like hems and clothing and stuff. It's really like truly unbelievable how much muslin sheds and just gets absolutely everywhere. I think that's it. I am going to cut apart this silly little garment and transfer it onto the fashion fabric and keep boogieing, y'all. Yahaha. Yeah, so I think my next step is going to be starting to assemble the lining layer because I want to then look at that and see how it all looks together. I think I'm gonna put on an episode or two of Dimension 20. I have been getting back into that because the first few episodes are about SantaCon and this weekend is actually SantaCon weekend. <laughs> It has been an evening, y'all. We've had some successes and some failures, and it is one in the morning, and I am getting ready to call it. You'd think I would have learned my lesson from last time about letting Lizard After Midnight speak into the camera, but here we are again. Maybe words will come out, perhaps even sentences. 
Time alone will tell. So we got all of our uh, outside facing fashion fabric pieces interfaced, which I am glad I did. However, I wish in hindsight that I would have interfaced and then cut out the pattern pieces because for whatever reason, like the stretch of this fabric, uh, it just kind of shrunk slightly when I use the fusible interfacing. A success is that I tried making my own bias tape for the very first time, which is very exciting. I think it looks really clean. I'm gonna grab one of these. Like I'm probably gonna add some kind of top stitching or detailing, but I am really obsessed with how clean this line looks just as it is now. So I'm gonna finish up those last little bits of embellishment um, and then I will see y'all in the morning to start looking at the mask and the cape, which will be very exciting. But first I need to sleep. I need to sleep a lot. Hey, it's Future Lizard. This is the part where all my hall mat ambitions and hopes and dreams kind of crashed and burned. I'd wanted to finish this cosplay and wear it at this convention in December, and that did not end up happening. So we are going to take a quick intermission, just two and a half minutes to time skip and figure out where we're going next. So it's intermission. Get a snack. I'm going to play some Breath of the Wild and tell you about why we are taking this break. So the next morning after the last time I was filming, um, in the light of day, honestly, it was just very clear to me that the build was not going to get done in time. God, they really got me getting my steps in, huh? Although I guess that's the game. I also thought it would be fun to show, you know, the wild and why it's so breathy. There's my guy. So since we had an unexpected little break in the process, I thought it would be nice to just have a little break in the video. Are there any other corks I have marked on the map? Let's be real, it's never going to feel amazing to like postpone a cosplay build. I was excited about wearing it at Hall Mat and it didn't end up happening. I'm gonna focus on like being glad that I called it when I did instead of after I had tried to pull like three different all-nighters in a row. What are you? I'm gonna fight you, but oh, it's, I think I'm just coming from a weird angle. Okay, that's fine. This is, it might not be fine. I might have underestimated how fine this is. Oh Jesus, don't blow me up. Now I'm on fire, great. Your friends are dead. That's not gonna do anything. I don't have really high hopes for this core exceed, but we're gonna give it the college try. You did it! Hell yeah. It truly was the right call to postpone it. I did not have time to get it done. And now I can be really excited about making it on my own schedule and taking lots of pictures and videos and stuff of the process as I'm making it. All's well that ends well. I wonder if I have enough core exceeds to expand an inventory slot. <gasps> I do. I have 36. All right, Hestu. Here we go. That's a stopping point for this intermission so good. You would think I planned it and I truly did not at all. I will see you on the flip side, ready to do some more crafting and making and feeling very fresh and rejuvenated and into these tiny little forest goblins. Oh, oh, there's a snowball fight happening outside my window. It snowed last night. Oh, oh no. Wow, sorry, we needed that energy today. Um, hello, welcome, oh, oh, child, oh no. That's not a ball, that's a hunk. Hey, pals, welcome back from intermission. It's a new morning, it snowed last night, um, and we're gonna get back on that horse. A mechanic that I struggled with at first in Breath of the Wild, but once you get the stealth armor set, it's like you're kind of fine to get on the horse. Because I am no longer building this on a crunch schedule, I am going to shelve the hood slash cloak and continue working on our little apron overall jumper top. There is some kind of weird like pattern piece Jenga that I'm gonna need to do to figure out how I get the zipper in there and how I get the, you know, straps along the back to turn inside out, but I I'll figure it out. To me, it almost kind of is giving like 
like mountains, like mesas a little bit. It took a lot of pressing to get this to actually lay flat. This guy is looking like <laughs> very large right now. And I just have to trust that I patterned it properly and that this will all pleat down into something that isn't as giant as this looks and feels. Time to pop everything together and hopefully get some kind of cute little thing out of this. That's not a good sentence. God, I really have to learn my lesson about like starting filming while the tea is still steeping. So I'm gonna save the full like putting it on, reveal how it looks when it's worn for the very end of this. But I just wanna say, look, it's almost entirely done. It's like, I think it looks so cute and so clean. I'm so happy with the way the like lining turned out. My last step here is I do need to stitch down the straps in the front and sew on some buttons. I did make buttons for this using a button covering kit. Uh, I do not have any footage of me covering the buttons and decorating them because I did that the night that we canceled our Katsukon hotel. And you know, sometimes hand embroidering and satin stitching is like a self soothing tactic. You might notice from my hair that it's uh, about a week since we last spoke. I have been working on my, sorry, that spoke was very, like you can tell that I'm from Baltimore. <laughs> I have been working on my backlog of things that I needed to edit and post. I've also been working on building my Discord, which I'm really excited about. And today I am getting back into the Coric zone. The last thing that we really haven't looked at yet is the boots. I know I'm going to be building on a pair of brown boots that I bought for my Ianthe cosplay. I got them off of the clearance rack at DSW. I am not a young man anymore and I cannot wear the $10 fast fashion shoes for cosplay like I used to be able to do when I was younger. Last night I actually revisited the um, rendering and kind of took a second pass. I updated some things that have changed since I got fabrics and made choices with them. And I also took another pass at the boots because looking at them, I didn't really love the path that I had chosen. Honestly, that's a huge part of what I love about doing original designs is if I get to a point in the build where I realize I don't really vibe with my plan, I can just change the plan. And I do this almost constantly when I'm making stuff. So I think I'm gonna start with making the little like strap parts that go over the ankle and the heel first. And then I'm going to make a mock-up of the actual cuff that's going to go around the top of the boot. I was gonna hold this up to be like, here is just a little test I did to make sure I liked the way it looked. And then I realized like, does my mug match this cosplay a little bit? The ankle straps, I'm mostly gonna be working with stretch fabric because that's like the number one way to make life easier for yourself when you're working on footwear for cosplay. I'm thinking I want them to have a little bit of embellishment, but I really don't know what. So I went digging through my stash and what I ended up finding are actually a few spare, like coverable button bases that I used for my Jane Porter cosplay in 2016. And let's be real, there is just no greater thrill than finding an old cosplay material that you saved from however long ago 2016 was and being able to use it again. When it comes to the part that is going to like wrap around the calf, 
That is some spicy peppers because I'm not totally sure what that is going to be. A lot of this design has been like really clean and really inspired by, you know, the aesthetics of the costumes that characters wear in this game. But one of my goals with this design is to combine that kind of Zelda NPC vibe with a very messy, very organic forest dweller kind of aesthetic. So I'm just gonna take whatever I've got, you know, like fabric, paint, I don't know, and bake up half of a plan and see what ends up looking good and feeling like the vibe for this kind of like wooden tree spirit gremlin. So here's the deal. I am starting to feel the fear because I have been working for ages on all of these pieces and I don't know how they're gonna look together. Oh my gosh, and I forgot about the tea, the one thing that I was gonna try to not do again. The final stretch of making a cosplay is just always the most terrifying part because it's my biggest nightmare to sink all this time and all this effort into a project and finally hit the finish line and be like, oh, this looks like, you know, B plus. It's good, it's fine, you know, it's it's well made, it's not sloppy, but it's like, fine. The boot covers themselves were a huge risk because I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna like the way it looks until I'm already hours into doing all this hand sewing. This is also very much a symptom of me being alone in my room for too long and just staring at it. But the only way I'm gonna find out if my nightmare will become a reality is to actually finish the project. I'm gonna caffeinate and I'm going to complete all of those final last steps. Oh Zelda, we're really in it now. Let's, let's do it. Let's finish this. Did I spend an entire day just hand sewing yesterday? Yes. They're looking cute, but I've gotta find a way to cover the big front zipper with something. So great news, um, I completely panicked and now what I'm doing is hand sewing on some foliage. I am hoping that just sticking on some of these will enhance the forest gremlin vibe. Okay, I think, I think we've done a <laughs> random horn that honked at that exact moment. I'm gonna head to the living room to get it all on and find out because my workspace is not cavernous and I would not be able to get all the deets in a shot. I'm gonna throw on whatever brown wig I can find so that we don't have this distracting Crayola nonsense in Hyrule. It's probably gonna be a little bit girlier than I'm really aiming for with the cosplay, but you know, I've got the wigs I've got. Next time you see me, I am going to be addressing this all this, next week we're gonna get so weird with this whole area 
and I am terrified and thrilled. If you want to talk more about this build or if you want to tell me about your own builds, I have a Discord. It's a fun place to talk about whatever you're working on and also perceive people's pets in the wholesome channel. I would not have been able to get this far without y'all supporting this build on Kofi. You are the reason I can make and share these builds. I am so honored you joined me on this journey and I can't wait to show you where we go next. So, you know, let's become a Koric, become a Koric today. Like, when did we make the bag full of Korok seeds? Don't worry, it is a whole other video that you've gotta check out next.